All right, folks, welcome to another one of my ZBrush tutorials. And today we're going to make a jalapeno pepper. Now, this one is a lot simpler, so it should be a much shorter video. But I think you'll, I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy this one. So anyway, as always, I'd like to uh, tell you that this is a very, one of the very best pieces of software I've ever owned. And it's manufactured by a company called Pixelogic.com. You can visit their site. And I've had it for over 10 years. It's registered in my name. And I continue to get support and updates 10 years later. That's pretty amazing. So anyway, we're going to get started with our jalapeno pepper that I'm going to make for you. So uh, as, uh, we're going to start with a Z-Sphere. And we'll drop it to the middle of the canvas. Well, hit, you can hit T on your keyboard for the shortcut to edit it. I'm going to turn on the floor. And uh, we won't really pay that much attention to coordinates as I have done in previous videos. Although you can. Uh, but this is going to be a real simple short video. So uh, anyway, we'll get started here. We're going to add a Z-Sphere. And we're just kind of going to go, kind of do it kind of, you know, any way you like it toward a thing. Maybe add another little one there. And uh, we're going to build a basic shape of the pepper here. Might have to scale this one down a little bit, like so. And we're going to turn off the floor because we're really not going to incorporate it that much in this uh, video. But we kind of got a basic jalapeno pepper shape out and uh, jalapeno pepper shape outline there. And we're going to add our stem. So we're just going to put a little bitty Z sphere, and then we're going to add another one. Hold down the shift key so you get one the same size. Oops, back up a little bit. Maybe we should move this one out a little, where you can uh, grab it. We're going to add another one there. Hold down the shift key, pull that one out a little bit. Maybe uh, decrease the size of our brush so we can get a better handle on things here. And uh, maybe move this down a little bit. Move this one back a little. And uh, move this one around. Let's add another one here, another one there. Kind of give the stem a little bit of a shape there. And uh, perhaps we'll just scale the end one up to uh, kind of show where it's picked off the plant. Kind of like, uh, like so. So anyway, we're going to... Uh, Arrange things a little bit here. Uh, let's see, we'll get the stem up like that. Maybe, yeah, I think it's good enough. But you hit the A key on your keyboard to preview your mesh. And we got a pretty good little shape there going. So, as always, you can get the Shift F for the polyframe. And as I talk a lot about poly groups and how useful they are. I wasn't really not going to use them that much here. But you can see the uh, pre-assigned poly groups. We have different poly groups so we can do different things to two different groups to get maybe a little better effect. Uh, I think I'll use one here. The only use a technique here. And uh, we're going to mask a little bit. And go down to our masking menu. We're going to invert it, and we're going to see if we can uh, do a little bit of a deformation here. And we'll go to our deformation. Perhaps we will size it down a little bit. There we go. And we'll take off the mask. So we got kind of a basic shape started there. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to go ahead and fill this entire mesh with a single color. And so we go to our MRGB and we can expand our color menu a little bit to uh, refine our, our color. And I want kind of a dark green to start off with. And so we're going to fill that object with the dark green. And I've been using this other material here. It's called the blend material. And I noticed it works really good. 
Hmm, let's see, so I got a brown color there. What's up with that? So we'll go back to our color menu. And we'll fill the option. Eh, it's a little too light. We need a much darker green. And I'll fill the object. Mm. We might want to might want to modify the material here a little bit because we want a much darker color. So uh, maybe we can lower the diffuse. There we go. That's that's more like what I want. Okay. So. Uh, <coughs> I'm just going to skip right on ahead, and we're going to uh, make a denser mesh on this thing. Well, first we have to turn it into a poly mesh. Now we're committed to our poly mesh. We've got a fairly good uh, base color there, and we're just going to go ahead and divide this thing. Get it nice and smooth to get started. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do some uh, just RGB painting on this. Add a few little features to make it look a little more realistic. So uh, we're going to increase our draw size a little bit. We're going to use our standard brush to start. First we're going to pick out a, uh, make sure our object is filled. We're going to pick out a red color here to uh, kind of show where the pepper is getting ripe a little bit. Now we can set our intensity here. We got a pretty low intensity and a pretty low uh, Z intensity. Of course, we're not adding any. Uh, we're not doing any Z add here. So we're just going to kind of uh, go around there and maybe put a little red there, a little red here, maybe a big streak of red here. And then what I what I did. Oh, I'm going to put some on the end because they start ripening from the end, kind of, sorta. Maybe I'm just kind of, kind of fast and loose here. We add a little more red. Now I'm gonna add some yellow. As uh, peppers turn yellow before they turn red, so we'll add a little. Uh, we'll lower the RGB intensity a little bit. Okay, put a little red in here. A little yellow, I mean. <laughs> yellow here and uh, maybe some yellow here turn up the intensity a little bit right here and get that a little bit higher yeah. kind of just play it around there now also when peppers ripen they tend to have areas on that are black so what we're going to do we're going to add a little black we already got a uh, black here, so we're going to switch color. And I'm going to use a standard brush, but I'm going to use this uh, spray tool. And we're going to kind of just, not, not quite what I wanted. We're going to use an alpha, we're going to use an alpha along with this. So we'll get kind of an alpha like that. I'm going to add a little, uh, maybe we can adjust the stroke there a little bit. Lower the flow. See how that works. Let me just add a little black here and there. And I think uh, what I'll do here is maybe do a uh, a drag rectangle. Yeah, that's that's more like I want. Do a drag rectangle on it there. We got a little smearing there. So we'll add some there. There. And we pretty much got maybe we can add some lighter green in there uh, with our spray. Because sometimes there's a lighter green areas. When peppers turn ripe, they tend to go through several phases of colors, so we're gonna add a little uh, add a little light green to there. Rev our flow up a little bit, and then right there, yeah. So that that's that's good. That's good. It's it's kind of an artistic thing, you know. You kind of want to pepper with a little, little bit of uh, color to it. And so now what I'm going to do now is we're going to do some Z adding. 
We're going to uh, try some of these different uh, sculpting tools. I think the last one I used it was a blob. Now, since this is a sculpting tool, the, the Z intensity is important. So we're going to try, we're going to kind of zoom in here. And, yep, that's too much. We don't want to add any color. We just want to add the sculpting part. So we're going to get a real low intensity there. You might want to I take it up to two. That's not quite what I wanted. I'm going to try a different brush here. I think I use a noise brush. Which, if you hit the, while you're looking at your brushes, if you hit in, yeah, we'll try the noise brush and see. Eh, too high of an intensity. Maybe we should put an alpha in there. And some we can also make the brush very big. We can, uh, no, that's too much, too much. Let's back this up. Let's try something else. Let's lower the Z intensity. That's too much. Uh, down to two. And we'll hold down the Alt key, that'll give the inverse. It's not quite enough. Yeah, this is a little bit more what I wanted. Just want to kind of texture the surface some. And I'm holding down the Alt key while I'm doing a noise brush. So it'll make, uh, kind of do a cavitation thing. And maybe we'll lower the size of our brush. Now I hold down the Alt key. Need to get that intensity up. We want our pepper to be a little bit wrinkled. Yeah, that's the one I wanted. That's really the effect I was after. I changed it to the uh, spray stroke there. And now, yeah, this is what I've done earlier. So this is going to give us a nice kind of a texture to our jalapeno. And... Texture there. I'm going to put a little on the stem. Now I want to add a little color to the stem as well. Maybe some black. I think we need a little black on that stem. <coughs> Oop. Just a little bit. And we'll add a little more texture. And so, I want to try something out while I'm here. As uh, I've had ZBrush a long time, so they've always had these 2D brushes. And I believe I can, uh, I think I have to wait till I do the render. Let's see. Well, well, we'll do some of our 2D brushes. I think this drops us to the canvas. But, uh, yeah, this will, uh, well, okay, we're not going to switch. But uh, what you can do, what they usually do in ZBrush is you go ahead and render your object. Like, say if you want to pose it this way for your final picture, you, uh, you render it. And uh, I learned this trick the other day, smooth normals. This uh, helps a lot with the realism. Do a soft Z, a soft RGB. And we're going to do a best render. And now what you do, to use your 2D brushes, you have to drop it to the canvas. You can no longer do the uh, modeling thing. So this will be a final render for an image. So we're gonna. I'm gonna show you how the much forgotten 
uh, 2D brushes are still very important and uh, in, in editing your final 2D image so we're going to do this, uh, this noise brush we're going to switch and this is a 2D brush so you can uh, whoop, you can add you can lower the intensity you can add a little noise to your image now I've got it very low so but you can kind of polish things up on your final image and uh, I haven't used these in a long time but they're still very important tools and as always you know uh, you only get the uh, full benefits from any software that you own and you registered so this is one of the things I wanted to kind of uh, this colorized brushes whoops it's too intense we'll lower the intensity of this colorized so you can do a little final touch on your image before before I have perhaps you take it into Photoshop or whatever it is other image editor you might be using but there's a well, there's quite a range of uh, of uh, these 2d tools and I haven't used them in a long time but they're there for you to incorporate so I have used them in the past but it's been a while but like I say this is once your image is flattened and rendered and you can uh, make a little final touches on your image so uh, we'll render it again and so that's my uh, tutorial on how to make a jalapeno pepper I hope you enjoyed it and uh, be sure to visit at pixelogic.com and uh, find out more about ZBrush so thanks for listening and viewing and we'll see you again sometime